Hello people! How's it going guys and girls? Boris D here and welcome to this new video. So as you've seen from this clip, recently I've been at the biggest festival in Norway. That was almost two weeks ago, but you know, band stuff and other things. Ha! <laughs> Bullshit! Get the fuck up! <laughs> I was saying the band stuff and other things, plus I got this beautiful toy here for the live shows and since it arrived I couldn't stop playing it. Too much fun. Anyways, Tons of rock. So the festival wasn't in my plans to be honest, but the Norwegian got a free tickets and we decided to split the other one and go for one day. That day was this one with 10 bands here. Let's start from the beginning. Tickets price. Doesn't matter where you go in Norway, but uh, if there's one thing you will always complain, those are the prices. As I do every single day here. But I tend to forget that I'm a small YouTuber and my paycheck isn't even one third. Of a Norwegian one. The daily ticket was something like 1500 crowners, that's something at 130 euros. Not price for me as I said, but as we will see later, for what the festival offers is not bad at all. So as always we took the train to get to Oslo, it was a nice and sunny day, maybe too sunny goddammit, the f***ing sun was hitting my f***ing face for the entire day. And the fact that here in summer is never dark didn't help too much. I arrived to Oslo you could clearly see that a lot of people there were going at the festival. Especially for the long line that was going behind the corner and behind the corner and behind the corner. Wow! That line was huge. For one second we thought we should walk there, you know? The phone says 40 minutes. It's not that bad. Yes, it will have been bad. So we get to the line, thinking to wait maybe one hour or more, but for my surprise we wait probably something like five minutes. Everything was so well organized that there wasn't just one or two buses. There was buses coming constantly. There were two buses coming, take the people, get away. New buses coming, get the people, get away. We took probably, I, I will say, five maximum ten minutes to get into the bus. You know, for someone that lived in Italy, and uh, as my Italian followers would confirm, festival organization in Italy sucks. I have friends that went to see Motley Crue and Def Leppard, and when Def Leppard started to play, they were still in the f line. Can't imagine how it feels good when things works for once. The concert place. Guys, this place was amazing. It's crazy that this place is just 17 minutes out from Oslo. Green, beautiful, just perfect for a festival. Here you can see us going to the entrance where we will have to show our tickets. Waiting time, not even five minutes. And there was a lot of people coming constantly. But for each place there was two people working. One was scanning your tickets and the other one was already prepared with the bracelet. After you get over the ticket points, you get to the, I guess, checkpoints, where they check your bags, etc. And here too, they have split lines. When they see that more people are coming, they were opening another lines. And again, it was perfectly smooth. At this point, I was a little bit scared because I had my camera in the bag and at the Wasp show in Oslo, they say that I couldn't bring my camera. And precisely when the security started to touch my bag, they asked me, do you have any camera with you? I don't know. Fortunately, they believed me. I wouldn't know where to put the camera then. So I think that the reason why they don't allow you to bring the camera is because there's already a professional photographer that take pictures of the event, probably paid. But they don't want to have a attenders of the festival taking professional pictures. I don't know. I had to film, by the way, with my phone, so the quality is a little bit shit, but you get the idea of the festival. Finally, inside the festival, the first thing that I do every time I'm at the festival is bathroom. And have you ever seen that much bathroom? It was nuts. And this was just one part, guys. There was plenty of tools all around the festival. And not only, everything was clean, smelled good, papers as much as you want. And this was really nice. Hand sanitizer outside the bathrooms. Imagine that this was the third day of a festival, not even the first one, and everything was so clean. Again, Thumb up to the organization. Oh, I forgot to mention something. As every festival, at least here in Europe, if you have a plastic bottle, you have to throw it before you enter in the festival. But the nice thing is that when you're inside, you get this plastic bag where you can refill it with fresh water as much as you want. And the beautiful thing is that it's free. The water is free. I already spent nice words for the location, but how is it at the concert area? Well, beautiful. Three stages, really close to each other, so you don't have to walk a lot, but not that close to border each other. We had a more underground stage called Moonlight Stage. That was actually my favorite because it was covered from the sun. The Vampire Stage and the Scream Stage. 
which was the main one, where bands like Pantera, Ghost, etc. played. The first band that was going to play at the main stage was Phil Valo. Not something that I really care, I listened to him when I was young, but there was someone, the person in the other room, that really loves him and really liked him. I mean, what's, what girls doesn't like him? But we had something like one hour before he started to play, so we decided to move around, check a little bit the place, going inside the markets, when a nasty, filthy, acid scream catched my attention. It was from the moonlight stage. We got there, and my reaction was, what the fuck is that? Three girls, dressed in white, playing ferocious black metal. The band is called Witch Club Satan, and as I'm recording right now, they have just two singles out. Let me say, it was really cool to see. All three members sang, and they sang really good. There's at some point in the show, after the monologue, they went in the backstage, I thought it was over, but no, they came back with a long wig for each member, and they were completely naked. I swear I didn't look at that. I was uh, focusing on the white guitar, which, fuck, look how beautiful is that white BC rich. I want it so bad, so subscribe to the channel. Nice show though, really atmospheric. Our water girl went down to the shore one night. Time to get to the main stage. As you can see, more and more people were coming. Look at this. This also was really nice. What disappointed me though was the people. That's something that I've seen in other festivals that have been, like Metal Days. I understand that there is people paid to take off the trash from the ground, but come on, the recycled cans are just there. Bet that half of those people are the same as then go in the forest, take some picture, hashtag my home, nature lover, I love nature. So heading to the stage to see Vil Valo, there was something going on though, a marriage. This is the second marriage that I see at the concert. First one was on the metal days. I don't understand marriage, but uh, I'm happy for you. Time to Vil Valo, girls are already waiting, all happy, mine included. Hey! Here we are, Bill Valo. My first tag was, damn, he's so small and tiny. I know the song though, as I said, I listened to him when I was young. The song were executed nicely. My attention though was always catched by the guitar. What he's doing there with the guitar? Look at that swing! Is that even legal? <laughs> Time to go to the vampire stage. Look at those people, there was more and more and more and more people. I didn't even think that was possible to have so much people. I know that not everybody was from Norway, of course, but for a country of 5 million people, it was pretty impressive. At the vampire stage, we had Wright. A black metal band from Norway, born from the ashes of Winder. I already saw Wright once. In 2007, they were touring with Marduk. It was my first black metal show. Nice concert though, like the first time I saw them. Imagine that someone told me there that uh, the singer is the organizer or one of the organizer of the festival. After the ride, the sound started to be really strong, so we decided to sit a bit while we were waiting for the next concert. So we were sitting there in the shadow and uh, my attention was catched by this guy behind in the region, drunk as fuck, sleeping with a beer in his hand. So I just want to film a little part, you know, filming the Norwegian, asking, ask her about uh, how it's going the festival. <laughs> and ask her how she was feeling. And I don't know if I accidentally woke him up or he accidentally woke up, but he woke up and heard him. I'd like to start by just you telling us what is the, 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 the primary ideology of Gorgoroth. Yes, he was screaming Satan. Funny thing is that he was waking up saying Satan, falling asleep again. That was so funny to see. At some point a guy from the security came and he saw him sleeping and uh, he was worried, you know, what, what was going on, so he, he just uh, went on his knee, put his hands on his shoulder 
And he woke up screaming and threw the entire beer onto this guy, you know. Oh, I wish I filmed that. It was so funny. Oh, look at this popcorn guy. This is something new. Usually what I see is all this bored costume at festivals. Time to see TNT at the Vampire Stage, a band that I didn't know anything about. It's an 80s metal band from uh, Norway. Really famous apparently, they this, this sold 4-5 million albums worldwide, but uh, I never heard about them. Hey, but wait a second, who's that guy walking in front of me directly into the Moonlight stage? I recognize immediately his battle dance, because you don't see that too often around. And yes, was Talok for Mayhem. So I went behind him, I stopped him, and as soon as he turned, he was like, oh Boris, hi. I did a video in the past of Talok called This is uh, where Talok is from. I know that he saw the video, even commented. But you know, being recognized by people that you listen since you were a teenager, people that you had posters in your room, recognize you and say, hey, hello Boris. That felt strange, but also awesome. I can't deny that. Dalok is really a really nice guy. He was heading to Napo Napalm Death. We took a picture that uh, ended up to be a video. This one. I didn't have any idea though that uh, Napalm Death were going to play already. So we decided to go there too. And um, yeah, what you expect? This was a Napalm Death show. <laughs> I saw them many times, I'm not a fan of Grindcore, but it's always fun to see them and just the Barney dance. <laughs> Worth the ticket price. Anyways, it was a good show. Time for a break again and then it's time for Architects. My brain was like, uh, you don't like them. But there was a guy there that we met that said, oh man, you're gonna see Architects, they are so freaking good, you, you will love them. No, I definitely don't like them. It's a matter of taste. But you know, I love clean vocals. But I don't like when bands do like and then like they have a finger in their ass. So yeah, for me it was a no. Can you see this is a huge crowd moving into the main stage? I do too, because it was time for Pantera to play live. Cover band, not cover bands. I personally don't care because I never liked them. But I always had a huge respect for them. And I'm telling you, I watched them with pleasure. It was a nice show. I was actually surprised by the feel of some vocals. They weren't bad at all. If you know a little bit about him, you know that he's also a huge fan of black metal. He have also his black metal project called Scorn. And he's also a friend with uh, some Norwegian black metal bands and especially with Sater from Satyricon. So it wasn't a surprise when he, he invited him to sing along with him, Walk. But now something during the show happened. The Norwegian her friend started to say, "Ew, disgusting." No, it, it's not me. I couldn't understand what was going on. I, at some point, I was like, "Did I drop too much fart that I didn't even realize?" And she's like, "You, you, you don't see that?" And I was looking at the stage, and I didn't realize that just a little bit closer to me, there was this. Look at this character. There was bathroom everywhere. But our hero decided that there wasn't enough for him. So yeah, let me piss there in front of everybody. Pantera finished, time to take a look to the markets. Metal Rock Shop, indie recordings. There was even Nessa Blood and many others. Oh, look at what is playing at the bumper stage, Gojira. <laughs> Never listen to them, be honest. Just a couple of songs here and there. I don't know if I like them or not. I need to listen more, I'll be honest. But what I like is their lyrics. Just for that, they have my total support. During the Gojira show, I had also the pleasure to meet again Anders Oden from uh, Cadaver, also bassist and manager of uh, Soteriacorn. We took a picture, the new region took this video. Awesome guy, check his band Cadaver if you didn't. Now it's time for the headliner though, but not before I had my damn dinner. Ah, look this delicious vegan burrito for only 13 years. Ghost, 
Do you like Ghost? I love Ghost, guys. Years ago, before Ghost, I was thinking, when the old dinosaurs will stop playing? Who will lead the metal scene then? Doesn't matter if you like them or not, but can't deny that they will be one of the band that will lead the metal scene in the future. <laughs> After Ghost was time to go home, so back to Oslo, the bus left us precisely to the French station where we took the train and came back to Moss, where we were received by this cute pet cat that of course I had to bet. So, did the cost of the festival was okay at the end? For what the festival offer, for the organization, for the bands and everything, I would say totally worth it. With that said guys, this is all for this video. Thanks for watching and as always I will see you in the next one. Cheers! Satan. <laughs>